Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. Um, my name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Uh, welcome to these updates where I talk about some of the programming and some of the updates that have been going on in the Inkscape project and especially some of the work that I've been up to in the past few weeks. Um, basically, if you are new here, the deal is, is I am an independent free software contractor and I have basically put myself out here to be essentially hired by you, the Inkscape users, to work on Inkscape on your behalf. Um, and with that, I give a thanks to all of my sponsors. These are the people who are ba basically paying me for my time. Um, they contribute through Patreon, they contribute through LibrePay, and um, I just thank you all so much because if it basically wasn't for you guys, um, I wouldn't have the time. Like I'd have to literally get contracts with private firms instead of working on Inkscape. Um, so I think it's it's critical that we uh, continue this investment um, so we can make Inkscape the best it can be. And with that in mind, I'd like to put out a request as usual for you to share these videos as much as possible. The more Inkscape users that we reach, um, the more of them will be able to contribute to this pro project and therefore the more time I'll be able to spend on it and hopefully the faster we can do Inkscape development in the future. Okay, so with the uh, red tape out of the way, let's talk about some of the things that we've been getting up to uh, in the past few weeks. So the first is the excellently good news about the color branch. Uh, I've been talking a bunch of times about this uh, color refactoring work that I've managed to do, and uh, it's merged. It's finally merged. I cannot express how happy I am that the... Um, it's about six months worth of just refactoring and uh, retooling. It's 13,000 lines of Inkscape deleted, 16 new lines of Inkscape added, um, lots and lots of back and forths with four different uh, reviewers, and it's, it's in master, which basically means that this code will make it into 1.5 uh, to be released in a year and a half, maybe. Um, but what does this do for us practically? So because it's a refactoring branch, mostly it's just underlying tooling. It's, it's stuff that needs to be in place in order for other things to happen. Uh, but there are some things that you would no notice if you were to use master today. Um, the first is that we can now open SVG files that have uh, CSS color module uh, colors in them. This is basically if you, if you have an SVG file that's made uh, in Firefox or something else where they use non red, green, blue, uh, colored definitions, those should now be supported. You should be able to open those in Inkscape and the colors will be um, correctly converted. The other thing, and this is very minor, is that you can actually type in one of those color module CSS uh, definitions into the uh, color picker and it will use, it'll basically parse that same thing out. Um, but that, that you can tell that that's very minor compared to like what we want to get to, which is full CMYK uh, full color managed support within Inkscape and within the SVGs and the PDFs that we output. Um, the things that are uh, essentially in, next in the to-do list is I want to get the, the color picker support, uh, basically the refactored color pickers that allow uh, for, for more accurate picking, uh, more stable picking, especially in the CMYK, uh, multiple um, item picking at the same time, if I can get away with it. Um, we also have, do you remember the work that I did back in November when I was showing the uh, CMS ICC profile stuff where you could basically change the display and I, I used a new interface for like selecting the color pro pro profiles and I said uh, that we would try and do some um, uh, color separation and stuff. Uh, so that user interface is, is still on the to-do list as well because that also needs to be merged in eventually. And that's actually what spawned all of this color stuff. And finally, the actual rendering stuff itself. Um, so this is the, you saw the rendering experiments. Those um, experiments are still going on. Uh, we're gonna see if we can get some better re rendering, uh, but it's okay if we don't, there is still, there's still plenty that will improve in Inkscape, even if uh, gradients that you define in CMYK don't look exactly how they should. Um, this is going to be relatively minor and there are mitigation strategies that you can use uh, compared to the actual like being able to output PDFs properly in CMYK and seeing the rest of the results properly. Okay, um, so 
I have also been working on the bug accelerator program for 1.4. This is where the Inkscape project itself has hired me. Uh, basically, I'm being paid from the charity side to work on Inkscape's uh, issues for the 1.4 release uh, with Tav and uh, Vibehav. And um, I figured we could go through some of the things that we managed to fix as a part of that program. These are things that you will see in uh, 1.4. Uh, the plan for 1.4 is that it should be released soon. Uh, we are, I, I'm sorry for the delays that have happened. It's just that there's been a bunch of things that have been going on inside the project when it comes to the amount of resources that we have available. And we've not been able to put together the 1.4 release sooner um, because we certainly want, wouldn't want to make a release that was unstable, especially with some of the Windows bugs that are outstanding. I think it's wise to wait until we've got more of these things fixed and then make a release that's uh, a little more solid. Um, th that means that there's still time for you to test it and time for you to tell us about issues, especially if they're important to your workflow. This is pr a pretty critical time to make sure that Inkscape's next version will work for you. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna turn over here because this is where I got my list of bugs. Um, I've got all the graphics prepared for the About screen and the Welcome screens uh, for 1.4. These are all the graphics that were done by artists during the About screen contest. Uh, they've been basically edited and, and for formatted for the sizes and things. Um, I fixed weird ra randomness that would happen when you created a star and when you let go of the mouse cursor, it would uh, randomize again. And there was a whole bunch of deep reasons why that was happening, so I had to refactor that in order to fix that. Um, there was a fix to Spyro, very similar kind of issue, where if you closed the path as you were making the Spyro, uh, when you moused up, the uh, Spyro curve itself would change. And that basically mean, makes the tool unpredictable. So I managed to fix that. That also required some refactoring in order to change that. Um, I fixed a, an issue with PDF uh, anchor links. These are basically where you create a PDF file by, you know, you say, sorry, I mean, you create an SVG file with anchors in it, and then you save it as a PDF file. And those anchors are actually links that you can click on. Um, if you put an anchor on a semi-transparent object, it would basically take up the entire PDF uh, page. Um, and it wasn't localized to a specific area. I managed to fix that. Um, there was a crash in the PDF export when you had a stroke width that was zero. It was set, but it but the stroke width was zero, and it had stroke and it had uh, markers. That's been fixed. A um, there's, so there was a very very strange bug that was happening on Mac OS where Inkscape would get stuck in importing mode. Basically, when you read in an SVG file, there's a global flag that says I'm importing an SVG file with these options. And uh, it's only temporary as it's opening certain files. But on macOS, it was getting stuck. And what that basically meant was uh, Inkscape was importing, was, Inkscape was opening icons, you know, SVG files that were used for the user interface itself, as if it was importing them into a document. And that was crashing. Uh, so it would get stuck like that and it, we wouldn't be able to move it. I had to refactor a whole bunch of Inkscape uh, to get away from this gl global flag because that's a bad way of programming um, because it, it's, it's just inherently fragile to have a, uh, a, a preference which can be saved to the disk which affects how SVG file, like any SVG file, could be opened. Um, yes, bad, bad, bad. Uh, so that's gone now, so which fixes that and a bunch of other pro problems. Um, I, th there's been a whole bunch of fixes to the batch export. Uh, oh, and to the export dialogue itself, I should say. Uh, these range from user interface improvements, uh, user interface tweaks to just fix a couple of things that look wrong. Um, problems with previews, problems with file names, problems with directories uh, being incorrect. Um, and also uh, problems with certain combinations of batch export preferences. So what I did was I created a full table of all of the uh, possible export options, whether it was a vector option or a raster option, whether it was single or batch, whether it was uh, the page or the layer or the selection, whether this, it was selected items only or not selected items only, a full matrix of testing. Uh, and I worked my way through through that list, found where, the, where it was broken, and I've fixed 
every single one of them. So hopefully the uh, batch export will be much more stable for the next release. Uh, but please do test it because this is the kind of thing that I think if impacts quality of life when people can't export correctly. Um, I've actually been working on trying to speed up the spray can. Um, there's a bunch of speed pro pro problems that have happened. It looks like a feature that was added to uh, do single click spray cans. Um, basically made the spray can much, much slower. This is especially evident on Windows, but I can definitely feel it even on the Linux machine. And uh, I, it's very difficult to fix because, you know, I could just remove the feature, but I don't really want to do that. I want to actually get behind the scenes and figure out why the spray can is so slow in the first place, especially since it's only slow when you have the fill and stroke dialog open which suggests that there's an interaction happening between one part of Inkscape and another part of Inkscape that affects the speed. Um, this is a good lesson for anybody. If you're experiencing slowness in Inkscape, try closing some dialogues and see if that helps. Um, we should definitely fix those issues, but in the meantime, it might be a strategy that you, that you can use yourselves. And um, yeah, that's about it. There's a bunch of other like smaller fi fixes and things that have happened in the meantime. And I think this video is long enough already. So what I'll do is I'll save um, my colleagues fixes for next time. And um, yeah, please leave a comment below. As I said below, please do share your uh, these videos and um, also share your thoughts about, about Inkscape in general. Uh, there's a lot going on in the, in the graphics art world. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time. Oh, and uh, yeah, I, I did have a uh, new organization for my desk so that I can sit here, program away and, and, and have a better advantage for looking out into the greenery, which is genuinely really nice. Um, yeah. Okay. Bye.